International partnerships often involve a lot of people, resources, money, different languages and cultures. In such settings, there are heaps of things that can go wrong. Our team of researchers agreed that while you cannot avoid failure, we at least want to learn from it. But how? We asked people in Rwanda, Switzerland, Sri Lanka, Bolivia and beyond the same question. What is the role of failure in international partnerships? And how can it become brilliant? The term brilliant failure was inspired by Dutch researcher Paul Iske. He calls it a well-prepared opportunity with a different outcome than planned and a learning effect. And indeed, failing is part of the essence of research. Embracing brilliant failure doesn't mean anything goes. It is a skill set which can transform an unexpected twist into an opportunity to lead and to learn. Well, there, there are a lot of cultural differences and to cope with them or to cope with failures is a challenge we are still learning. For example, emotionally, um, I sometimes get so excited that I even do things that are not correct and I know they are not correct. You know, for example, um, one example is, uh, how do you say that in English? Gesichtswaren. Uh, Help me keep face. Uh, how do you say that? Uh, Safe face. Safe face, yeah. Thank you very much, Elliot. So saving face is, is, is uh, very much important in the African context, at least in Ghana. And then in a workshop, some, even a principal researcher, um, found so many wrong excuses, you know, excuses that, that were not relevant for why he didn't say that. And so I, I uh, contradicted him openly, bluntly, saying, hey, that's, that's not true. And in the very same minute, I, I recognized uh, this is not good to do so, to say it openly, though that's not a good coping with cultural differences. But on the other hand, um, I'm still learning how to do that in a, in a nicer way. But it's very important uh, to also say, well, in a, in a research project with partners between North and South, you cannot say, you cannot just sit there and say, I get the money, but I don't do anything for it. That's also not what we expect, but we need to find and to learn ways how to deal with that. In the communities where I work, eh, especially in Aymaras, no, 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 Entonces ellos deciden continuar mañana, al día siguiente, o si nos toman la iniciativa de que puedan distribuirse a tareas por sector, por población. Entonces ellos no, 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 yo he visto que no se sienten mal, que dicen no hemos cumplido, no, siempre toman la alternativa de buscar otra solución y eso lo hacen conjuntamente. Eso Eso se refleja en las organizaciones campesinas aquí en el, en el altiplano. I mean, that's certainly a, a cultural embedded form of accepting responsibilities. Yeah. And I think that's missing somehow, at least from my perspective, is the sort of the quality of responsibility as an open topic. You know, who can take responsibility? Of course, in a hierarchical setting, it's always the boss. So I'd rather not do anything because I can then blame the boss. So responsibility, I think, is a, is a very pertinent issue around also topic of failure. Yeah. My, my cultural background, from my, my context, women are more likely to accept um, failure than, than men. Actually, we even have a proverb in King Rwanda, to say as a man is just his way of doing things. So for men, it's somehow not very easy. 
but for women it's just obvious when it's, you realize you have so made a mistake immediately you you, you apologize and, and move on because cyane icyambere nuko umufatanya bikorwa iyaje atu atubwira iki ikimuzanye cyo umva twafatanya nawe iyo dusanze rero biri mu byo natwe twari dukeneye dufite dukorana nyine tugafatanya ko abameze nka byandi bavuga ngo nuko rose rwabyuka dufite dufatanya people we work with in other countries tends that people we found over the years we work well with them right so that they used to understand what the logic of having a partnership is and of collaboration but that clearly a lot of sri lankan researchers i i think have two two issues um, one is that um, they might collaborate but they they have a very limited view of what that means so they just sit there and collect data for somebody else and I, i've been very unwilling to do that i mean if, if we work with a swiss we're equal partners so i think many of them are used to that sort of subordinate role and they sort of go along with it uh, and i think that that's one issue and then there's a reaction i think to that issue which maybe if we put it that way some of them don't like they don't understand how you cooperate with with foreign researchers and on equal terms so they have all these things like we won't give you our data yes or we won't tell you what's going on and and this kind of thing or they i think maybe sri lankan researchers even at the top end have very when i say top end at the top institutions like yours um have um very little experience and maybe self confidence about working uh, on an equal basis with international partners yo he visto de que tienen que ser líderes y tienen que partir de ellos mismos no si hay interés lo que priorizamos que también estas organizaciones tengan algo que quieran eh formularlo plantearlo I think uh, guarantee for failure is lack of commitment, lack of ownership. For example, one hidden expectation is uh, we assume that all the people involved are in the same way intrinsically motivated as we are. And then we are surprised it's not the case. And then we have to deal with that, which is often very challenging. I mean, I think of course it is a really bad failure and emotions probably come into it. But uh, I, mean, I think how you deal with it depends on what your role is in that partnership i mean if you're responsible then, then you have there's probably more you can do and there's more you can more responsibility if, if you're not necessarily the lead one of the lead people in that then then you just have to sit back and wait uh, yeah um yeah some of those too um yeah so i i, th- I think the one that we had this big failure we we effectively it was terminated and um we then just have to re- rebuild something else so i think the learning really happens when failure is being put into a context the context of growth and so when uh we can put failure into the context of growth that has really to do with mindset so for me uh, a successful partnership begins with the intention uh and also a failure of the partnership begins with the intention if we could get deep enough in our own mind and understand what actually is the motivating factors why we're we doing something often it is a superficial idea or it might be a very self-fulfilling idea or a self-centered intention if we're clear with that but often we're not because we're either motivated by some uh, emotions or we're motivated by something that is not quite clearly and this is where contemplative practices can really help you to look deeper into for instance what is it that your values are or what is your heart as opposed to your mind or your uh, brain wanting